So, before we get started with this week's episode of the podcast, which should have been up fucking months ago, but school got in the way and I got real busy. So, here you go. This isn't much of a transition, but here is the latest episode of the podcast. And I know that only half of it got uploaded to Spotify. I'm going to try to fix that to get a part two out. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to fix it somehow. So just enjoy the podcast, will you? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Culture Shock. I am your host, Seth McKendry. Yes, I'm back again, believe it or not. They haven't cut me off yet. Uh, here's my guest. Hi, my name is Roy Castillo. I teach uh, woodshop at San Antonio High School, and I'm Seth's woodshop teacher. I- I've known him for four and a half years. He graduated last year. Um, we did some cool stuff during the closure. Uh, got a lot of stuff. Squeezed in an extra project. I'm really excited. Yeah. About so uh, how did you find out? Well, we've been to start. See? Even 40 seconds in, I'm already fucking up. <laughs> uh I, I would say that um, to start, we've talked about getting this done for what, like a year and a half at this point? Yeah, I was really encouraged about it um, when you did that interview with, um, did you George, do the, Yeah, I did the one with George, or no, Joan. George? I haven't I haven't done the one with Joan yet. I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to line up schedules with that one, but I did the one with George for sure. I'm trying to do a second one with him. Uh, What I liked is that it was so off topic and I don't mean that because this can be whatever it is. Uh, Yeah. There's no rigid, you know, format. So it was, it was uh, fun to just hear side of our conversations about WWE uh, and like Duncan Trussell and, you know, Something you know, I know very little about, which is fun. Which mainly just like, you know, comedy stuff and all that. But uh, so we've talked about getting this done for a while. And, you know, by hell or high water, we're here. And uh, so uh, tell me first impression. So what's interesting is sometimes a, like a student will stick out from the class and you were in a real pain in the ass class. Um, it was just, there was a whole Wait, bunch was of- this sixth period or fourth period? Yeah, it, was, it was a six period wood one class, uh, which man, given the opportunity, I, do, I try not to teach a six period wood one uh, class. Not anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. I try really hard. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> it's you know there's a a lot of things going on it's the end of the day um it's the most absences for kids that are squared away like they have football right and so then they're gone thursday and friday uh for the f- first semester right so there's already a 20 percent uh maybe less than that less than 20 percent hit just in relationship and curriculum right mm-hmm. so the, the most squared away kids the most responsible kids that are doing some sort of after school program well, they're gone. And then the uh, knucklehead kids are, well, knucklehead kids. And then you have to, you know, start from scratch because this is you know, wood one. It's kindergarten woodshop. So they don't know anything. Um, and then, you know, all, it's just perfect storm. End of the day, um, everybody wants to go home. And so what's interesting. Right after lunch. So everybody is all tired, you know, and everybody's like, you know. Uh. And did they start, doing, did everybody get free lunch? your ninth grade year i think so i, I so think the yeah. first year everybody actually had energy after. yeah it used to be that everybody would crash fifth and sixth period they just come in all sweaty and tired for, and I for was, my last two years that's how that went everybody was uh, everybody came in it was like the land of the dead everybody was just uh you know they started feeding you guys and then you just <laughs> energy so the reason i brought that up is uh, you spend a lot of time outside of class, like in the mornings, um, because the expectation that uh, you had for yourself was pretty high. Um, mm. And that's, that's what's cool about that class is that like you're this ninth grade student and you're in a class 
and you don't know right away that there are, you know, like half a dozen 11th graders and 12th graders, right? Mm. And so there's, there's these just strengths that they have, but everybody can suck at woodshop in wood one. Um, I definitely did. But you were also in the ninth grade, so you had plenty of time to get good at it. Yeah. And there were 12th graders that were just exceptional, or 10th graders that were probably exceptional in that class. Um, but you have all these ninth grade boys that are pain. Um, and I just completely separated you in my head from that class because we spent so much time before school. Outside of class? Yeah, in detention. Uh, which, <laughs> I believe you like earned the detention. Uh, I probably have given you a detention. It's a better narrative if I earned it. Come on. Yeah, go yeah. with the overarching story here. <laughs> like, yeah, you probably earned every single one of them, uh, either prior or during the time that you spent. Uh, I probably a- did something stupid, yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, that was cool because I think you reminded me like in the 11th or 12th grade that you were uh, in a class with uh, – I think it was Jacob and uh, yeah, Jacob and I was in the class. Yeah, I was in that sixth period because you didn't. You completely forgot about that. Yeah, there was a time when there was a student uh, not being accountable, and I left his bird in a tree outside. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Until second semester, because I remember Danny took it down from the tree, and he was like, "Why is this here?" Yeah, I remember. Yeah, do you still talk to Danny? Uh, it's uh, very off and on. That's funny. I remember he got in a whole bunch of trouble in that class. I think uh, it was just, you know, end of the day, rough class, rough year. Uh, everybody was safe. Everybody did good projects. Um, but it was, it was interesting that I pulled <sighs> out of that class in my head uh, just so that I didn't associate you with, you know, Jacob. No, I'm kidding. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I, I would have guessed. I think worse. Ross was in that a class. lot worse. <laughs> and, uh, there were there were some really good personalities in that class. It was the there was a cu- there was a couple of characters. It, it was the first class I did that Jenga lesson with. Oh yeah, know. yeah, yeah. It really was. I remember that. So that kind of transitions to the next uh, deal, which is. Do you have any funny stories of me fucking up somehow and like be getting kicked out of class for some fucking reason or something? Um, you're pretty honest. I sound super professional, but I, uh, you know, I've only been upset like two times and it wasn't with you. So I don't remember. I remember. Yeah. I, I just generically remember things getting screwed up. Well, but that's just, and it was always my fault. It was probably a glue up um, where I'll, it's often that I'll walk up to a student and think, how did the words I said mean this? Right. Um, and it just comes down to like, I didn't do a good job explaining it. Um, or I explained it really well three weeks ago. And, so <laughs> now it, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, no, I, I really can't. Uh, you, you remember that one time the blade stopped on me? In the, uh, all right. So, <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Did it break or did it just It jump? just, it just, fu- all right. So I was, I was doing a cut and I got right in the middle of it and the blade just went from, went from going to just stopped. And like, it just stopped right in the middle and it made a huge noise. And you were like, and I was like, fuck. And then you were like, oh, everybody come over here. Look at what he did. Right? Yeah. No, it was um, it was the one right back there. Uh, no, other side. One right by the lumber room. Oh, radial arm saw. Yeah. So it must have been in the right at the beginning of the year of wood, too. You know, yeah. what's really hard is that um, there's this thing that will happen where I'll have a – better relationship with a student than they have a grasp on the concept. And that's not to insult you. This is the second year you've mm-hmm. used that tool maybe once before. Right. And so I'll have this, you know, really good squared away, like, Oh, he's going to be fine. He's super accountable. And if it were, is Seth going to steal $10 out of the wallet I left on my desk? The question is, <laughs> no. but that doesn't mean that you couldn't, drop the wallet on the floor. It doesn't mean that the wallet couldn't get put underneath a piece of paper. It doesn't it's mean not that saying that. I wouldn't chuck it across the room. 
Yeah. It, it's not to say that like just an accident couldn't happen. And so that's usually when mistakes happen is that like, I'll have a really good relationship with a, with a kid. Uh, I know that they're going to do their best and they feed too much on the radial arm saw or it's probably what I did. Or uh, one time a student, uh, I said, have me double check the measurement on the table saw. And uh, he came, I came over to raise his hand. I came over to the table saw. Uh, okay. Is it supposed to be 31? Yes. It's supposed to be 31, 31 plus a 16th. Yep. 31 plus a 16th. It was supposed to be 32. And so then we had to like beat his project apart so we could cut the top and bottom to be 31 um, because he had already glued it up. So mm -hmm. that's probably what it was. I remember one time, uh, you took a big chunk out of our surface, our surface sander. Oh yeah. I uh, can't yeah. remember this. You're going to uh, need to jog my memory on that. I was pretty pissed. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, it didn't stick with me. Sounds like something I would do. Surface sander, so it doesn't matter, but, uh, Oh, this was that green one, huh? Yeah. 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 You did the right adjustment. You just did the right adjustment into the conveyor belt. <laughs> so instead of being uh, whatever it was, minus, you did zero minus, and that's a negative number. Yeah. You think I would have known that? You know, on the new machine, it will not let you do that. Good. And you, uh, the, the way I got rid of it is that you are supposed to surface um, – the conveyor belt you're just not supposed to surface it that much like it has a serviceable life like tires like mm -hmm. tread on tires yeah uh, but you hope not to you know jam on the brakes and make a flat spot on your tires mm -hmm. and that's what seth did to our service center yeah i i've done a lot of I, i've punched a couple of them i've uh <laughs> I, i've i've made a lot of mistakes in that class <laughs> say the least uh, do you know the, like the emergency brake on the bandsaw? Yeah. Okay. So there's a little micro switch in there that you click and then you use a friction brake. At Corona High School, the high school I went to, the old, old, old teacher. So the teacher that taught Wittenberg, mm. uh, he came up with this like thing where you get ninth grade boys to kick the planer, right? So imagine kicking the side of our planer, right? And Probably hurt my foot. And he, he teaches those kids that you have to kick the planer sometimes to get it started, right? So you're pressing the button and you're kicking the planer, right? And there's this like polished spot through the paint right to the cast iron. The cast iron is polished by like 30 years worth of ninth grade shoes. Um, and then the teacher comes over and he puts his hand on the micro switch, right? To adjust it because it's stuck in the, the brake position. Because there's supposed to be a spring in there, but the spring mm -hmm. has you know, since broken. And so the, the teacher teaches uh, all these boys that you have to kick the planer, which you can't break a planer uh, by kicking it. Um, and so I distinctly you remember- You can break it plenty of other ways. Like stomping on the planer, right? Trying to get it to start. And then the teacher would come over, kick it, and then press the button and it would turn on. Um, and I- Be like, oh, you're a god. Yeah, like, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. And there's a polish spot. Um, and I haven't found anything like that here to do. Just, Pretty sure you'll find it. Yeah. The, the lights in the, uh, the IMAX, they're on a, a, a timer. And mm -hmm. uh, I, at my old work, I used to like clap my hands when I'd walk into the room with the, uh, the automatic lights. And there were students that thought there was a clapper in the lumber room. Um, bunch of idiots start going ah! and they're college kids uh, but you know I never said it I just would walk in and clap yeah. <laughs> give or take so uh, what kind of student was I like yeah what kind of student was I so um, this can go both ways too <laughs> I thought you, you, were, you were a joy to teach um, you were fun uh, anything that was a pain was my fault um, because I, I totally could just streamline it, right? I always could make it easier, uh, but often I choose not to, uh, super unnecessarily. We were talking before about uh, my terrible typing teacher, Miss Bird at Corona High School. Uh, hopefully she'll listen to this and hear this, but... Uh, I doubt it, but go ahead. 
so you like as a teacher you make up these uh challenges they're just totally asinine um and i wish more teachers recognize that the the instruction that they give is just made up um and so like i convinced this ninth grader that like man you got to make this fish look like it's real uh, <laughs> that means that you got to get really good at using these tools that you'll never use again um and for only use once in your life and never touch them again well, that's totally horseshit because you did really well at the uh, the Maloof thing, right? Well, the, okay, twice. You uh, can, you were you know, really impressed, right? It's kind of it's kind of a muscle memory thing, so. Uh, but they were really impressed, right? Yeah, they were. Well, really impressed from what you. I remember, yeah, yeah, they were they were thrilled with you boys, um, and so <laughs> it's this made up challenge. And uh, what I don't ever want to do is what happened to me in the ninth grade. I was in this terrible typing class. Um, and this teacher told me for the whole year that I was failing the class. So I'd come in before school um, to like redo assignments, typing assignments. And uh, so it'd just be like, like you're typing right? the cat walked across the road. Like, you yeah, know, was, was dumb like, shit, like, like just horse shit. Yeah, like just no, no, no. It was it was legitimate stuff. I still have the coursework because it is good, good. It was good lessons, but um, no, it's like hot professional letters replying to a business. Oh, stuff you never use. Um, but I think it helps me with my email writing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good place to start. And that's that's what I don't ever want for my students is to be doing this sometimes impossible task. Right, like they're never going to get good at it. Mm. And I would rather egg them on into stupid pursuit, right? Because then I find out like how well they, they deal with adversity than um, to just make it this like you must chamfer the chamfers because they've always chamfered. The, it's so stupid. <laughs> right? I would rather it be like, you're really excited about this. And there's a kid over there that doesn't have, uh, he doesn't know how to tie his shoes. And so we're giving that guy more time uh and teach that kid how to tie his fucking shoes <laughs> yeah he didn't know how to tie his shoes like he showed up wearing velcro shoes and he, <laughs> out he didn't know how to tie them and then you know he didn't know what a screwdriver was so he was really behind what and, uh, wait wait realize, go he, back for a second what he didn't know what a fucking screwdriver was you know there's a lot of students that show up very unprepared for this class and it's wow. nobody's fault so if that guy needs time to get caught up on the lesson, whatever it is, um, mm -hmm. and you don't, well then let's just make it more work. And I don't mean more negative work. I mean like more time to play in woodshop. To really understand like what you, you know. Which See? isn't what I was doing, right? If I'm just doing it in typing class, if I'm mm -hmm. just doing time it twice, I'm not really learning anything. So mm -hmm. that's. You're just you doing the shit. Yeah. So I hope that lack of a better I, word. Yeah. You didn't feel like uh, super self-deprecating. I suck at woodshop. Uh, I mean, I'm self-deprecating regardless. So <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe you, you honed it to a, a nice chamfer in this class. You, you like, I'm, I'm pretty, <laughs> you've known me long enough to figure out my sense of humor. So you kind of, you'll pick that up real quick that I, I always got something, you know, that's not so positive and happy to say about myself. <laughs> You're like, oh, I, I life's not all happiness and rainbows. Get over it. You know? Like, I thought it was for comedic relief. Like, you know, when... Uh, mainly, because I'm an entertainer. So <laughs> When you're watching a movie, and it's not Debbie Downer, right? It doesn't bring the mood down. But someone says something that's, like, uh, off-putting. Completely uh, out of the box. Uh, well, not it's related, but it's like off pain, kind of sad, but they're not bothered by it. I always mm -hmm. felt like that was your angle. Like, you know, what would go good right here. This and then you would say it and it was usually pretty funny. Yeah. See, the one thing I've always had down timing. Timing is important. I uh, sometimes kids slay. comedic timing at that. Yeah. Sometimes kids slay in this class with uh, jokes. And what's hard is that. Uh, I teach ninth grade because I think it's funny. You, you, uh, and you really time. can't uh, with the jokes they tell. You can't I give can't the can't you can't respond. give the proper comebacks because you know no, they're they're ninth grade boys and they'll be like, oh, guess uh, my woodshop teacher said. <laughs>
Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I can't, I can enjoy it, but I can't laugh. Yeah. I can enjoy it, but I can't tell, uh, I can tell my friends later and yeah. what I wanted to say or do, but usually, uh, I have to, uh, play it very professionally I and mean, yeah. that's fun because, uh, I was, yeah, I was that guy. I was the idiot kid saying stupid things in class. Yeah. Uh, so. I still am. <laughs> but, you know, that's neither here nor there. But, uh, so I was not a complete pain in the ass? If you were, it was my fault. <laughs> that's where I'd prefer it, right? Like, if I've set up, if I've asked you to do something, right, and mm -hmm. then you can't do it, well, shoot, I asked you to do it. Right. Like if I wanted it to be easy, I would just do it for you or yeah. I use yours as the demo or mm -hmm. and there's times when I did that. Yeah, there was a lot of times you did that. But I, I do that for a lot of students mm -hmm. where I'll like let you flounder a little bit so that you have enough. So you can try to figure it out and be like, OK, what do I need to do here? I, I want you to have the context, right? Because I don't want to just do it for you mm -hmm. because I just want you to know how it's done mm -hmm. and learn how to do it. And mm -hmm. shoot, have enough time for you to actually get good at it. Um, so sometimes I'll let students flounder just so that when I do explain it to the class, they actually get the knowledge. It's it, like, they like clicks. Yeah, that's important. Um, so if I really felt like something was super important and I was just letting you like simmer over there, um, that's what it was, is that I really wanted you to understand what we were working on. Mm -hmm. and because uh, I already know how to do it. And so if I just tell you, okay, go do step and I give you five words and then mm -hmm. you do that five words and you come back, well, then I'm never going to get, I'm never going to help you learn beyond five words. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to come back with eight or 10, you know? Yeah, exactly. We're never going to have a conversation about, you know, the domino. Um, yeah. In wood one, I'm not letting you use the wrong rasp so that I can be like, yeah, that one, that one screwed it up, dude. Um, even yeah. if I saw you do it, right? Like I saw you pick it up and I'm like, that's not going to work. Um, we were like, yeah, he's fucking up this project. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I can just walk it over to the spindle sander and fix it. Um, All right. So uh, I, the next question I'm going to ask is, uh, we talked about this before. You, you actually texted me yesterday with this question of lessons you learned from me while teaching me. Remember, you texted oh. me that, and I was like, hey, let's, there's, there's a question, you know? So, yeah, that's what I was talking about with the, uh, the Coach Bird story. She was also the, the softball coach. I hope you're really getting, like, a really good picture of this, like, very short, very short haircut, really mean, short, chubby woman that pointed with a yardstick. Yep, I got it. This, yeah. Yep. She would, we were all sitting at computers, right? And she would point and she would like rake the yardstick over our head. Uh, she was, like, you're gonna hit me. <laughs> uh, she was so mean. She was even meaner to her. Uh, her can't show up to class. You can't show up to that class all tired because you'll get fucking hit in the head. Well, and so it was kind of like you would get a detention, right? Like I do detentions. Or mm -hmm. you get uh, an invitation because you suck. And uh, <laughs> so I, I, I didn't ever want to do that to a student that was like genuinely interested. Like if, mm -hmm. you're, if you're genuinely interested and you would like to get better, I'd like to give you the feedback you need to get better. But grades are not the way to do it, I don't think. Um, mm -hmm. For a student that doesn't care about the concept, right, I still don't think grades are the best way to motivate students, um, you know. And maybe that's just because of, you know, I get Seth in my class. I got 10 Seths and I'm not saying you did bad at school because you didn't, but I don't know if in the ninth grade, the difference between an A and a B would have encouraged you to spend more time sanding. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't tell you any. any. Yeah. So that was my, uh, what, what I learned from working with Seth is like, how do I make sure the rigor is there, right? The difficulty is there. Um, and the length, but it's also the, under like understandable and encouraging. Like, it's probably oh okay, encouraging so I want you to do more. Like I, just, you know, I want you to pick like up how up. how I did, how I was there every fucking day at what seven a.m. But yeah, what fucking was, ungodly hour did you have me wake up at? Yeah, I think <laughs> you and Noel that were here 
off and yeah. on Tuesday, Thursdays at seven o'clock in the morning. I would feel bad. Uh, that guy would, would show up at seven and, uh, and I, I would show up at seven fifteen. and I'm like, oh, I didn't schedule anybody for detention, but Noel comes every Tuesday. Uh, and then so started, you just have to figure something out. He started telling his mom he had detention, right? Uh, because I would just, you know, detention, office hours, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. and so he, he came to like maybe six or seven detentions in a row. And I guess his mom thought he had gotten that many. He's a good guy. He's a good, mm -hmm. good guy. So um, his mom called me and she was pissed right because she she's like what the fuck are you doing with my child <laughs> she wanted me to uh explain an educational language uh why uh, her student needed so much correction and i was mm. like no, no no he's not in detention it is during detention but he's just getting ahead or staying ahead or working on his project he's, he's just like, showing up like <laughs> yeah he's having fun and she was just like oh <laughs> uh i think that was that mom i think that was noel but uh that guy was here a lot that was fun Cause I know you would have never got those calls from my dad. Cause he didn't give a shit. <laughs> he's like, Oh, he's not home. He's not cool. eating my food. He's not eating my food. Awesome. All right. <laughs> cool. Uh, do you have any notes before we go to the Wu-Tang questions? Um, when, when, so when did I play that in class? Uh, th it, it was after school. It was, school? it, it was only me and you in the shop. It was, uh, Shit, let me think. Um, it, it was I remember the first time that I played that, and it was in that six period class, and it must have been, um, you know, when we do the Jenga final. Yeah, because it was an instrumental, because I know for sure you wouldn't. <laughs> uh, well, if it was after school, if it was like, well, even still, I try to keep my work traffic like super sterile, mm -hmm. like super benign. Um, I don't even like some real Dexter type shit. Yeah. Yeah. Because exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a murderer. Uh, well, no. you know, it's good <laughs> show. No, like I don't, even, <laughs> I don't, I don't put my phone or my personal laptop on the district uh, Wi-Fi or stuff. Yeah. Like I don't even do that in public. Because they monitor everything, right? Also, I don't want to pick up, like, I really think highly of our um, IT staff. Mm -hmm. Right. Man, it only takes one bad actor, and that bad actor could honestly just be a kid. Like sometimes you'll see a student who's like really talented with an angle grinder in my class, and those kids exist in computer science. Mm -hmm. You know, where they just show up to school and they already know way more than the teacher. So yeah. I, I just I I think the the uh, I have no reason to believe the security at the school is lax. But the last thing I want I want is uh, some kid to uh, download malware to my my phone, and I'm yeah. way too scared of the boogeyman. But I think uh, you just made you maybe way too scared of the boogeyman. Yeah, I've thought about turning. Who retired on. in 2006? He retired in 2006. <laughs> no, it was uh, 2016. Uh, the handlebar mustache boogeyman. He retired. Oh, in oh okay. I was talking about somebody else, but. Okay. He used to, you know, eat worms, fucking paint his face. He used to carry a yardstick around, you know. He acted like he was, he used to bang a clock on his head, hold the whole deal. <laughs> and he got fired for lying about his age and then got rehired like six months later. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But um, back to the Wu Tang thing. Um, I think I know for sure it was after school. I think it was toward the end of the year. And I think it was, uh, it wasn't protecting that. It was, uh, oh, shit. It wasn't clean in the front either. It was, uh, 36 chambers. The, uh, the, it was an instrumental for 36 Chambers. The the band or the composer's name is uh, L. Michaels Affair. They do lots of different stuff. But one thing that they hit on a lot is uh, like orchestra or large band ensemble of um, Wu-Tang. Mm -hmm. So they'll 
it's not just a cover, right? Because some of the samples are exactly the same. Yeah. But uh, it's cleaned up, and I don't mean that in vulgarity, right? Because it's an instrumental. Uh, yeah. It's up in that um, it's new. Like I think it is a new sample. It might mm -hmm. be the same material, but I mean, it wasn't being made, you know, in back in 1993 off of a tape recorder, right? Yeah. I mean, off of you know what, what would be contemporary equipment. Uh, and I heard about it on NPR because I am a, a goop and I listen to, I used to listen to news radio like that. It's uh, far too political now, but they used to just talk about like Balboa Park um, organist, like the person that plays the organ at the park, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Phantom of the Opera. Da, 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 like, da, yeah. Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. And they would also talk about El Michael's Affair. So there was like a 30 or 40 minute interview with that guy. Uh, and he was just talking about his inspiration and who he's worked with and why he did this project and why he continues to do these projects. Uh, and it's really good. Um, and so I play that in class along with a whole bunch of other stuff that my wife and I have curated for our classrooms. Cool. So, uh, yeah, cause I remember it was, uh, it was 36 chambers and I seen that and I was, I looked at it and I was like, wait, what the fuck? It catches kids off guard. I was uh, like, you? Really? Like, is there a glitch in the matrix? What the fuck am I missing here? And, uh, and then you were like, wait, no. <laughs> You're like, calm down. <laughs> I think it's the same. I think it's the same uh, group. It might not be, but there's an instrumental version of uh, uh, Minds Playing Tricks on Me by the Ghetto Boys. Mm. And uh, my wife played that in class. Uh, of course, it has nothing inappropriate in it because it's instrumental. Yeah. And this uh, kid that wasn't doing very well in her class, who's just a pain in the ass, uh, he came up and he's like, hey, Miss C, uh, do you know that you're playing the Ghetto Boys? And she goes, yeah, my mind's playing tricks on me. And he's like, oh, I just, I just want to make sure you knew. <laughs> to his class, and it totally changed his attitude in that class, um, which is kind of cool. Because uh, you know, it doesn't take much to relate to kids. Uh, now she does it because her classroom is often really quiet because she mm -hmm. teaches a art. And so um, when kids are working, right, imagine how it's in here where there's like a couple conversations, but everybody's like making a whole bunch of noise and beating things. Yeah. Uh, and then someone turns on. The, so there's no really real room for music in my class. It, uh, it's a big amalgamation of noise. Yeah. It would just be more chaotic. Yeah. But in her class, there is a lack of that chaos. And it's so just silence. Yeah, it'd be, and I don't think it'd be conducive for art. And so she does like she's got really. If you want some like lo-fi or like uh, like jamming music that that will not distract you, um, and that's another reason I don't listen to uh, Wu Tang when I'm working in the shop. Is that <laughs> it's just like it's a distraction? Because um, no, think because think about it. Uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but what I was gonna. I, I might as well say now what I was going to say earlier. Uh, you remember how you were talking about how like RZA creates his beats? The man's a motherfucking genius. Just get that out of the way. He's, he's a genius. He, yeah, he somehow... He would pull the, the samples off of a tape player mm -hmm. and then he'd send it to a mixer. So mm -hmm. VGA, just the two left, right into mm -hmm. the mixer. And then the only out that he could record was onto like a tape deck that was through the microphone jack. That's exactly that's, what he would do. Yeah, is that okay? So, or I don't know. I, it was documented was, documented in uh, that Wu Tang show I was telling you about. It oh, showed how he it, it showed how he did it. Okay. the f The first season, uh, really, of that show is like you're meeting everybody. Like you meet uh, Riza ODB. Jizza, Ghostface, like, you know, Matt, all, all them, right? You meet the entire clan. And then the second season is when, you, when uh, they start, like, when they start rapping, like, Rizza does his Prince Rakim stuff. And then, like, you know, that fails. And then he starts up Wu Tang. And then they get their own fucking. Like they get their own production company, they get their own offices. Like, yeah, 
and then they go to the beginning of uh, when the first album they shoot. Uh, I think it's protect. Yeah, it's protecting neck. They shoot the protecting neck music video, and they send the tape in with just the raw footage. And they're just like, "Here, it's done." It's like it's not done yet. Be like, "Yeah, it is." Then they just fucking put that up and show the release of the you know the album on vinyl and everything. I haven't. I so. We were talking about this because I was concerned that I wasn't like a big enough fan. It's uh, fine. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but um, I'm just talking out of my ass. <laughs> that's funny. Um, but so I, I thought about it on, on it a lot. And uh, I think what I liked about it is that except for the instrumental, right? Because that's being mm-hmm. redone. I, I already liked it uh, when I found the instrumental. But um Wu Tang put out their their track, their instrumental. Mm. And then I bought that twelve inch vinyl, and then I bought a whole bunch of that L. Michael's affair, and then uh, you compared it a little bit. Yeah, I, I'm a dork, so like uh, I, I, I would do the same shit. I've got a mixer and two two turntables at home, um, and I just you know how like I'll spend way too much time like tuning up a joiner. Yes, I like do the same thing with a head shell and uh, a, a needle on on a record player. Um, okay, I need to see this for one. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll send you pictures of it. <laughs> uh, I was pretty disappointed. I got uh, two new, um, like matching platters. They were used, um, mm. and one of them is just totally toast. And so I have to use my old one, which is, I think, better anyway. But uh, so now I'm probably going to use parts off of the old turntable um, so that little things that I was just going to ignore on the uh, right side channel. Um, are tuned up but um i think the reason i liked wu-tang is because it was so narration and it Mm -hmm. was uh like visceral or like there was lots of emotion kind of like it told the straight up uncut story without like all the you know bullshit and so when i I was little my so my family's like pretty hispanic uh and uh specifically chicano right Mm -hmm. so it was just like a lot of old school rap um there wasn't a lot of gangster rap until i was like probably in middle school or high school um but i think that was just because you know you you narrate or curate what uh what you want for your kids mm-hmm. and so it was like a lot of um oh, man i'm gonna space on his name but just stories about like um if you start selling drugs you're gonna end up uh you know uh going to prison and becoming a uh something inappropriate or uh if you uh do coke uh you'll, you'll end up on the street corner yeah exactly or um there's a or if you do coke you'll end up uh depending on circumstances you might end up with a multi-million dollar franchise like jj abrams <laughs> uh i was thinking of um oh gosh i can't think of his name but it's i think it's called a, ch- a child story a children's story um mm-hmm. uh oh it's ricky rick and it's a story about how um, uh, two kids uh, go down the wrong path. Uh, they start robbing people. Uh, one of them uh, chooses, now they're not in a group. Uh, he continues to rob people. He accidentally robs an undercover cop. And then he like is just running through the streets having a shootout. Uh, and then he dies. Uh, or he goes to prison. I can't remember remember now. But that was, that was what like uh, rap or hip hop was for me as a kid. And then, mm. um, you know, I found like a sublime and, and other just regular uh, white kid music. Um, and then <laughs> back, right through all the sampling and dubbing um, in sublime. Right. Uh, when I came back to hip hop, it was uh, like, obviously I liked West Coast rap because it was around. Right. I was familiar with it. Mm-hmm. But um, man, like the grittiness of uh, Wu-Tang was just like so much better. And uh, the, you know, the, the entirety of the first album, which is like uh, all the samples from that album, like, you know, for the beginning of, uh, I think it's Bring the Ruckus. Yeah, it's Bring the Ruckus. When he's talking about, when you hear that sample of that dude talking about the Wu-Tang sword and how he's got to try his Wu-Tang style and all that stuff. Uh, not off the top of my head, but I'm sure that if I heard the sample, I would recognize it. You know that 
like all the samples from that album come from one movie from the from 1983. Oh. And you the know, movie there's a whole bunch of these uh like really iconic films that influenced like some of my favorite movies like Kill Bill mm -hmm. that I really really need to watch the the old movies. I was listening to that um He's uh, the damn bird in uh, Aladdin. I can't think of his name. Uh, but I was listening to Joe Rogan. And, uh, of course. He, he talking about monster movies. Who you, who, Gilbert Godfrey. Um, oh. So Gilbert Godfrey is just having this like outrageous conversation with him about just 50s monster movies. And so that's what I've been watching. Um, nothing that like the bat. The bat. Uh, just movies that aren't like incredible, but like really informed um, how movies were made in the United States forever. And uh, I, I really like collecting media, like vinyl. Same and I here. I don't know why I'm not collecting things that are about to go fair use, right? Um, mm. They've been, you know, more than 70 years. Uh, some, some of them are 70 years, some of them are 50 years. Some of them are already fair use, like a terabyte or a 10 terabyte hard drive, whatever the hell. Uh, is not that expensive. I think, what is it, like five terabyte for $124 or something like that at Costco? I think so. I don't know. I haven't. It's not that expensive. Uh, I don't keep up with all that, so I don't know. Compared to like a $25 album, mm -hmm. you know, like I, why am I not collecting like uh, every silent film? Because I'm sure that those are all fair use and free on the internet. Um, yeah, I know a bunch of like 1930s movies like Frankenstein and like, you know, Dracula and all that just became fair use on YouTube. Yeah, like why, they just released them and everything. Why don't I have that? I, I don't know exactly how the tech would work, but why don't I just have that on my keychain that I can like bump it into my iPhone um, to watch? Right? And just like, be like, you know what? I'm watching Frankenstein and just fucking quality, right? It's maybe not the same quality that we expect in a movie today right yeah it's not 4k but you know it's the best they had for 1930 and i look at furniture that's super super old and i don't critique that like i'll, I'll enjoy something that is like super antiquated super simple and you know not not as sophisticated as a piece of furniture that's made today um and i appreciate that why wouldn't i appreciate frankenstein yeah or, or phantom of the opera no, 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 Sferatu or whatever that first. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, that was no Sferatu. It was 1922, I think. It was a German movie. The guy that looked like that guy, <laughs> the old guy, and uh, that's what we would call him behind his back. But he deserved it. He was so mean. One time, uh, uh, one of our friends was sleeping because it's a college campus, right? So one of our friends was sleeping on like a grassy knoll, uh, and I guess he thought that she was a bum. And so he kicked her like, wake up. You're not allowed to sleep. <laughs> and you are allowed to sleep at a grassy knoll at a community college. I, I don't care what anybody tells you. You're allowed to do that uh, because being in college is hard. And so if you need to take a nap, uh, just go take a nap. Uh, but yeah, so we would call him Nosferatu. So uh, back to the, uh, where he got all the samples from. Is from a 1983 movie called, uh, yeah, you better write this shit down. <laughs> uh, the movie is, I could send you a link to it on YouTube. It's called Shaolin and Wu-Tang. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, so I didn't grow up with a whole bunch, right? And I'm not saying that I was poor. I was totally happy, mm -hmm. uh, but and then I had some like, uh, like some times where I thought I was going to lose everything, right? Mm -hmm. I got evacuated for a fire and I could like see the flames that were like 80 feet tall. Yeah, um, you're like, oh shit, here we go. And so I just like, I've got this attitude of like, I'm not a prepper, right? Because I don't spend that much money on it. Um, and I don't have like caches of food buried in my backyard. But um, you don't have a secret underground bunker that no one knows about. I do not do not have anything uh, hidden really. I don't even have a safe. Like I should have a safe, but, um, come on, man. 
I like will be worried that I'm going to go without. And so I like, I want to have that stuff. And I don't mm. mean those things like um, I want to have, you know, a whole bunch of different things. I'll shoot, I'll wear the same pants for a year. Um, but like media, I've realized that like, if it's I, very valuable. Yeah. Like if we had been stuck at home two years ago, a year and a half ago, and we didn't have the internet, I would have lost my mind. I'm pretty sure there would have been a civil war. Oh, not, yeah. not, not to that extent yeah, of a civil war. You, you, you think so? Yeah, probably. If the internet because was around that time. Yes. Um, but fortunately enough, we all had, uh, you know, um, working internet Fox connections live. Yeah. And, uh, that's what I did for those first couple of weeks when like, uh, you guys were like MIA. Uh, you just but, fucking played video games for three weeks. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, that was what I was playing. Uh, and then I realized I was just bullying uh, like ninth grade boys. and Because <laughs> uh, it was just like, that's what I was doing. Um, so, uh, yeah, that movie's called Shaolin and Wu-Tang. I tried to watch it the other day. I found uh, it's, it was uploaded by this YouTube channel called Wu-Tang Collections. Okay. Because there's a bunch of... Uh, old kung fu movies from the 80s from called uh, Wu-Tang. So that's where he got the name from because of that and all the samples and all that shit. So uh, I found it and I tried to watch one version of it, but the aspect ratios just made it fucking impossible to watch. You know what I mean? Uh, we, we tried to watch uh, X-Files that way and it was like backwards and sped up. And all of the timing was not right. And it was just this really chunky, blocky, uncomfortable uh, cut of the movie so that they could avoid being caught by uh, uh, those that were trying to keep copyright. Um, mm -hmm. And I just was like, oh, that was terrible. And then uh, we saw it later because we got Fox or wherever it was streaming. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this isn't the same at all. Yeah, it's uh, completely different. So I think that uh, I was really big on that in in uh college like uh that was the way i bought books i took classes on whether or not not now i took classes i chose classes on whether or not i could find the book for free mm -hmm. uh, and so then you just end up on these torrent websites when you gotta somehow cut corners you know what i mean yeah and so i just had like a bunch of media on like weird things like lock picking and woodworking and you gotta learn lock picking man it's super cool you gotta uh, be dexter somehow in yeah. some kind of, you know, I don't, I, I do not know how to pick locks, but, um, a, lots of locks do not need a lot of, um, a lot of force or ingenuity to bypass. And that's, that's got me out of hot water a few times. Um, I feel like lock picking would, is a very useful skill to have because say, have you ever, um, do you know anybody that's hired a locksmith? Uh, no. The first time you do it, you'll think, why did I go to school? I could just be a locksmith. And I think it's like $300 when you lock your keys inside your house. Damn. And it takes the guy like a couple minutes. It took him longer to drive there. He's just like, boom, boom, done. Give me my money. Mm -hmm. he, well, because he understands like, uh, just like you understand the way that a disc spins on an angle grinder. Mm -hmm. Right, and then where you need to set it down. He understands what parts of the cylinder need to be where, and how you rake the tumblers so that you can turn the cylinder. He just gets it. He knows what it looks like. He's I feel like it's very complicated. Not really. Nope. Ah. I think that if you like genuinely got interested in it, like you got you're interested in Wu Tang or a special effects makeup, you would probably be a really good locksmith. Uh, uh, I might. Just pick it up because, you know, I might lock my keys out of my house one day or something and just, you know. There are easier ways to break into a house than, than raking, doing that. I would say only do it for fun. Uh, yeah, and do it for, I'd mainly do it for fun. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, it is, it's a really, it's everybody thinks of it like it's uh, something that's taboo, but it's already against the law to break and enter. It's already against the law to carry burglary tools around. It's already, mm -hmm. it's already bad, right? So having the skill to do it isn't bad. 
right? Because just having access to something, I mean, ultimately- That's just having a new skill. That's, that's all that is. You, you don't need to have a lock picking set to steal a candy bar at the grocery store. Yeah. You know, but if you did have a lock picking set and then you stole a candy bar from a closed grocery, it would just be more charges. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's uh, the knowledge on its own, uh, the access or the, the uh, possession of is not, it should not be a crime. Uh, mm. because ultimately, you have to choose to break the law to break the law. You know, simply just having access. It, it just goes down to your choices. Um, and I wish that we taught more young people things that they think are like, like cool, um, because then they would learn them. Um, mm -hmm. Just don't have a bunch of kids watch Dexter because they'll, uh, I had to especially stop. ninth grade kids. I had to stop watching that show because uh, I was having just like really gory dreams. I don't think I made it past like season four or five. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, I got some stories. <laughs> so, like when I was watching Dexter, it was uh, like we, me and my brother, we'd watch it for a little while and then we'd stop because it'd start fucking with our heads. <laughs> And and then we, it was like an off and on process, since there's eight seasons, and we like just finished it and finished uh, the new spinoff series, which is New Blood. We're I gotta wait till Sunday for the new episode to come out, which would be the final one. But overall, it's it's pretty cool. It makes me think, you know. That'd be pretty cool to be a, a blood splatter analyst. Like, how, how would one person get into that, like, line of work? Just be happy that I actually edit my stuff instead of just upload the raw footage. That's funny. Yeah, so, I really appreciate that. I don't know if I would have been able to uh, be, uh, yeah, it would have been rushed, whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing that's going to be a little tough, though, is... Uh, editing the audio portion of it because you know how like the video version goes up on youtube and then i just take the audio file what i normally do is i just take the audio file and like i the raw audio file and then i upload it to the host website for spotify and all that but now i'm gonna need to somehow take it over to a software and like somehow format it in a way when it's all uh edited so it can like not be seven minutes of dead air in the middle, you know what I mean? Yeah. And me just hanging. I have to go pee running away. Yeah, it'd be like, oh be like, hey, I gotta go. All right. So um what what else do you have written down? You know, one thing I Because I think was, we've we've covered everything so far. One thing I thought was really interesting, uh I would say the maybe not the last lesson I learned from Seth, but uh, <laughs> the most recent. Um, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but distance learning was not working uh, because I. How I, long ago was this? I don't even remember. I remember where I was, uh, but I don't remember. I remember it was in my office. I remember that uh, either I closed the class out early or you stayed late. Uh, I can't really remember. Could be but, either one. Yeah, basically, uh, during the dead air, um, you mentioned something uh, that's very specific, right? So it was the, the Dudley boys are two wrestlers. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you, do you want me to explain this? No, no, let, let me, because then you Okay, can okay, yeah. So the Dudley, the Dudley boys or Dudley brothers um, are a duo. And yes. They're certainly not brothers, right? Like one looks Puerto Rican. The no, other no, 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 no. They're one of them's black, the other one's white. <laughs> like, I so. mean, they they might be brothers, but they got two different dads. They're, uh, they're, it's a whole, it's just a whole gimmick thing. They're like, apparently they're best friends. So that's how, that's how that started. So Seth tells me this, uh, this, he just runs me down this story, right? And so I'm thinking, okay, obviously this is important to him, right? And I'm not, again, it's not that I don't care about <laughs> like, I don't have any background in it, right? And so often I'll just let students tell me about things they're excited about because, shoot, at least I'm not, uh, you know, at least it carries the conversation or at least it carries the time forward or it keeps the class entertained at the end of cleanup, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so you tell me in like very specific detail uh, about how Mae Young, this grandma, uh, gets like dead now. pile drive into the table. Um, and you're able to like just go into like if 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 this were a wrestling, <laughs> right, if, if if Castillo was teaching uh theatrics and wrestling, right? You basically gave me like a wrestling four description and used academic specific language, right? And then you tell me that you watched this for the first time when you were how old? Uh, this is the the power bomb through the table, right? Yeah. So that uh, probably like uh, twelve years old, maybe thirteen. Okay. So. At a time that's difficult to teach young people, this television show taught you something that you could recall six years later, right? Had you seen it since? Uh, no, not really. So uh, here I am, TV Time Woodshop. And um, you got to remember, that segment is 20, 22 years old now. So you watched it on tape? Yeah. Okay, so you watched it on tape. You watched it maybe three times. You watched it once. Doesn't really matter. You watched it very, very few times. Here we are at least five years later from when you were taught something, mm -hmm. right? And you taught how to put an old lady through a table. Yeah. Okay. So obviously it's exciting, but like I don't <laughs> too dissimilar class, right? I teach a dangerous class. It's really exciting. Um, and so, okay. I was like, okay, I need to go look this up. And if anybody's listened this long, pause the video. And I want you to go watch the Dudley Boys throw May. I think you could just YouTube Dudley Boys May Young. Uh, you could spell it. Table wrong. spot. You, you got to look up Dudley Boys May Young table spot. Table squat. Table spot. It doesn't matter. You're gonna find it because I found it. In no You'll time find now. it that way. <laughs> so the last lesson I learned uh, from Seth is that. If, oh yeah, this was right before school was letting out too. Yeah. Yeah, I remember this. If you want students to learn something online through TV Time Woodshop, you need to say it like 10 times. So for those of you that haven't paused, you should pause now. For those of you that are already paused, right, and went and found the video, uh, they Welcome put back. that old lady through that table like 11 times. And I'm not even exaggerating, right? Like they had at least six different camera angles and they played yeah. each of them at least twice. And then when they came back from commercial break, they showed it like three more times. So what that told me is that if I want a 12 or 14 year old boy uh, to learn something, it needs to be really exciting. I need to have multiple camera angles and I need to show them 10 times. Yeah. Right. And that's okay because it's it you you're only able to interact with it visually and in auditorially right there's mm -hmm. and that's all that there is right if you can't touch it you can't throw it uh if you can't jump into a table which i hear you you, you boys did um a lot, a lot, a lot times. yeah unless yeah. you can do gotta that. pass the time somehow you know unless you can do that man that that uh tv time english class is a really really uh, tough sell uh, for a lot of a lot of young people. So that was really interesting because, like, you recalled the information as well as I would have liked you to recall it, and you did it. You did it with a quality that, like, I wasn't reaching other students with, and mm. so I wish I had had that. I wish I had come to that conclusion at the beginning of the school year uh, rather than the end of the school year, but. I wasn't going to pass up on it. Um, you can use correct. it. Hey, you can use that shit now. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm really interested because this, this idea, um, it's, it doesn't exist yet in, um, that, like, uh, that metaverse. I think what's going to be different about that digital space is that you know how like if you if you log into Grand Theft Auto right now, it is still where whatever time it is in the game, 
Mm -hmm. I think with these virtual experiences, it's going to be whatever time it is at that virtual experience, mm -hmm. whenever you arrive. Right. And so, um, I should probably like, we have a 360 camera or 180 camera. I think we got a 180 camera in the library. I don't think it's a 4k or 8k or anything like that, but, um, I should really, really go get that, um, and start filming. So now that I'm not scared of filming in my classroom, I should really be filming stuff because they might need to see it 10 times. And if they're really excited about it, maybe they will. Um, and there's no reason why it can't be, you know, like it's already happening where I'll be on my phone and then all of a sudden something I'm looking at is a, uh, is a uh, augmented reality or virtual reality just in the gyro in my phone. Mm -hmm. um, have you seen that yet? Uh, not really. Um, I don't know. Like I'll be just like, uh, I'll search something and it will be like an event space, right? Like the other day we went to Disneyland and I looked at Disneyland first and someone had taken a 360 video and you know how on YouTube or a 180 video, you know how on YouTube, if you, if you pause too long, it'll start the video. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was scrolling past it. And as I scrolled past it, I moved my phone and I realized that the image moved with. The yeah. Entire oh yeah. I've seen those videos oh, on YouTube. Like, yeah. On, I was looking around and I don't even remember what the, the guy was saying. Cause I was looking at the floor, but, uh, um, huh. Were you in a class that I, I, I borrowed those VR headsets? Yeah. You, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my fourth. Pre I can't remember what class I was in. That was your class. Cause I was in so fucking many of them. That's but funny. all I know is that we did that. Yeah. So I, I should be, I should be making that content because I know it's coming and gotta be ahead of the curve. It would be really cool if I could, um, if I could keep, if I could like fucking time travel, if I could keep, like, I know that that's what everybody's always thought of. Like when the first person that took a photo, right. They were like, Oh my gosh, now you've, you can travel back to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and every time it's, you know, we were talking about uh, Nosferatu and, and all of that and they're not very good. Right. But, but you got to think about it in perspective yeah because if you well to go off of what you said uh perspective you know the movie was made in 19 fucking 22 back mm -hmm. then they the people that like watched that movie did not see anything near to what that was so they were scared shitless mm -hmm. meanwhile nowadays you'd be like yeah nah but think about it back then they were fucking scared out of their jeans. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It all depends on perspective. Like, if I'm watching an old movie like that, and, like, I can't put myself, like, I can't immerse myself into it, I just think about what time the movie was made, and say if it was made in, like, 1945 or something like that, right? Or just, like, 1980. I think about, oh back then how audiences would have reacted to it and then that kind of flips that switch and i'm fully immersed because yeah, i'm taken to that point in time passing up on the shaolin and wu-tang um film yeah uh, passing up on early early video um even to a certain extent of like just old photography, right? There's mm -hmm. all this media and it's becoming increasingly available. And I think what's going to get people excited is the newest version of it. Mm -hmm. But um, man, I, this class could exist for like another 30 years. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's not really a rush for me to document it. But it would be a cool thing to do. And it, it didn't exist for so many other kids, right? Mm -hmm. And so I probably have some, some limited or expanded by my interest obligation to capture it and put it inside that digital archive in a way that will be palatable, right? Because so many people will not go watch more than 15 minutes of Dracula. 
we invited yeah. uh ooh, man years ago we did um live music ensemble right so there was a real organist playing in the da, 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 yeah and the opera. Mm -hmm. and he was playing it to the silent film in san diego at balboa park it was that's beautiful. fucking awesome he was dressed up like the phantom it was incredible wait this is the original phantom of the opera right yes not colored not colored black right? and white All yeah right. that was amazing uh, it was on Halloween night. It was amazing. That's fucking perfect. Coolest thing ever, right? It was the second time we had done it. Uh, we were thrilled. And the people that we invited, they didn't last past the, uh, the first half. And I just like... So I know that... I know that that couple would watch the new Phantom of the Opera. I know they would. Like if we invited them over to watch Phantom of the Opera on Halloween, they would. Mm. Uh, but because they weren't able to appreciate um, what you- The were, media? Yeah. yeah the, the media, right? Then maybe we do need a 2012 version of Phantom of the Opera. And I don't know if that's the exact year, but um, maybe we do need- uh, A updated take on- these certain AR 180, how, how to use a rasp because all of, yeah. this, all of this information that I'm teaching, man, there's a book called file philosophy. Uh, and uh, it was first printed, I think in like 1914, it was put out by the company that's stamped on our Nicholson rasps. They just put out a book. Um, I'm not teaching anything crazy, but are you going to find that? And I'm not putting you down, right? I'm pointing mm -hmm. out, if you don't have a passion for literature, you're never going to find that in a library. And yeah. You, you're never going to go out and scope for that shit. And if you go to new libraries, they have less and less books. Mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to put libraries down. The libraries are, are, have a different job now. Um, and so, man, like, if this isn't going to disappear, I need to recognize that there's a time, it's right now, and I can preserve it and put it to the future. Because uh, if you think about it, you know how, uh, well, there's, I've noticed that there's a lot of uh, celebrities that take, they have like these vaults in their house. That's just like, they have like old ass movie posters from like 1919 and like just old movies that are like on reel to reel that are like that fucking big. And, uh, if you, like, I don't understand how they're able to somehow, first of all, find this shit. I understand how they're able to pay for it because they're rich out the ass. But <laughs> still, I don't understand how there's, like, this one-of-one one copy of, say, uh, the original Phantom of the Opera before, like, it was all, like, recut and, like, finished. The, like talking like black and white before it like th got theatrically theatrically released um saying you get that i don't understand how you go how you can somehow find that and just find it in the first place and be able to preserve it for the ne for like the next 50 years say when you die and they find it they're like oh shit this guy had a 1942 version of Phantom of the Opera for no fucking reason. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's one thing that my wife and I talk about because there's, I'm not saying that I've got a whole bunch of valuable things, right? But there are some things that I have that if you look at it, you're like, oh, that's cool. But it's mm -hmm. actually like rare or mm -hmm. it's actually valuable. Or, um, and if I don't do a good job of record, right? then she'll never know that it's, it's, uh, it's like if I just die, right? She'll have no idea that like, oh, that hand plane is worth way too much. Yeah. The last thing I'll probably That say, can pay for the funeral. Yeah. One time I, I uh, you'll, you'll find this. One day you're going to buy something um, and it's a good decision, but it's going to make your stomach hurt. Uh, and so you'll deal with that anxiety of spending. I think I've had, I've had that. 
Yeah, like f- fetal position, like your stomach yeah. hurts. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you make a decision. Every and- purchase I make, <sighs> okay. you got to realize I, I'm on. If you have it, if you have generalized anxiety about purchases, it's not getting better. So you got to work on that. So I had one real. Bad I got a grocery one. store job. I'm on a fixed budget. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had one of those. Uh, it was a it was a splurge that I needed to do because it was like the opportunity was perfect. Mm. Uh, and I bought it and it, it, it still was a really good decision. Right. Like if I sold it today, I would pro- I could probably double my money. Mm. Uh, but man, it, it made me sick. And uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but you got to hit home somewhere, dude. Oh, <laughs> I took, uh, so I took my wife like a week later to um an antique tool sale right and i had bought these like tools because i was super interested in them and i put out the like okay i need to recoup like 500 bucks because i spent 500 dollars too much um and so i put out like what i knew to be approximately a thousand dollars worth of fancy pants tools and so all these old men like flock to my little table (laughs) Uh, 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 it's like I got the back of my Hyundai. The, the doors open. We're sitting in the hatchback. I put put out a table. I put a packing blanket on it. I unpacked these tools, uh, and I sold a hand plane and uh, uh, I think like a, a, a tri square for like five hundred and fifty dollars. And my Damn. wife looked at me like, and I did this. We were in and out of there in twenty minutes. I didn't even pay for the stall I used. We were gone so fast. And so um, Tommy asked me, she's like, you need to write how much things are worth down because I had no idea you had valuable things. Um, <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. So uh, what else do you have written down? That's it, dude. I, uh, I think that I'm going to, I need to take the, my personal library of media more mm-hmm. seriously. Uh, you know, like I need to have a little bit more redundancy. I need to have, mm-hmm. uh, I need to back up my music, I think. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't necessarily want to be stuck with, you know, a few hundred pounds of records if I ever had to move. And I mean, yeah. like, or, like I had an opportunity to move to Brazil or something crazy. Yeah. Uh, 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 wood shop to kids that don't speak English. You're like, but I already do that. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. But something crazy, I just, I would have no ability. I, I would have such a hard time with it. Could you imagine shipping a house full of stuff to another country? That, 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 that uh, I can't even imagine that. I'm not but, saying that I want to do that. I'm yeah. just saying that, like, uh, it would be easier if I could just be like, well, I really enjoyed these and I could get rid of them knowing that I had, you know, like high fidelity records or recorded copies of my media. Or even cheap stuff like the the fast uh, MP3, just having that stuff backed up, mm. because you know it doesn't take much. Um, we travel, and when we travel, we run out of uh, bandwidth, and it doesn't take much to have to not have music in the car. Uh, so I think I think I need to keep I need to find all the fair use uh, old school videos, and I need to start downloading them as soon as they become fair use. I need to have the mm. copy. It's cheap. And, uh- so you you remember how all right we were talking about that May Young table spot, right? Mm-hmm. I can explain that if you want me to. I think people should just go watch it. The the idea is that if you want someone to learn something, man, you're gonna have to tell them a lot. Uh and I didn't realize that if I wanted <laughs> to see an eighty year old woman go through a table, all no, you had to I say the word woman go through a table. But, <laughs> Uh, and I didn't need to see it 12 times, but if I, you seen it 14, at least, <laughs> yeah, if I wanted you to learn something and I'm not saying that you didn't, but during distance learning, uh, if I wanted you to learn something, man, I needed to say it probably twice as much as I was saying it, uh, because I already repeat myself a lot in class, but I do too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nobody's listening. You leave the room, uh, the TV's still running, uh, you know, you just miss out. So I wonder if I thought about like, uh, leave it to beaver in those terms that like, mm-hmm. man, if somebody walked out of the room for this, the Brady bunch and you walked back in seven minutes later, you have no idea what's going on. You have no context see it again. Yeah. You're never going to see it again. So like that, maybe that's why those shows need to be so damn slow 
is because you need to be able to let dad uh, go to the other room for a few minutes and come back and be like, okay, so what are they doing? Yeah. Be like, Which okay, so he just put him through a table and he's on fire. So yeah, you need what's to see on? this at least twice. Where like, if I get up, like we'll be watching a boring movie and uh, I'll get up and my wife will go, ah, do you want me to pause it? I'm like, no, because uh, I don't care. But <laughs> oh, please pause it. Or uh, I posted uh, a Mando spoiler, not Mando, a uh, Boba Fett spoiler on my work Instagram. Um, and I just rewinded it. You know, it's, uh, that, that wasn't something that you could do before. And so how much more complex can you make movies? Mm-hmm. Uh, any media? Because you have the ability to review it. All right. So believe it or not, uh, we've been doing this for over an hour and in about a minute and a half would be in a, an hour and 20 minutes. So how are you feeling? I'm starved, man. I think I'm going to call it. All right. Well, uh, plug your shit. Oh, uh, that, that's how we end the show. Plug your shit. With, with stop is, uh, my work Instagram. I don't give out my personal one. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to think I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, for work it's just uh roy castillo um the language that you would look for if you're trying to find out would be bent laminated uh or free form all the links will be in the description yeah uh linkedin um yeah. that's pretty much it i uh i added some other um gosh i i'm not on twitter but i heard about <laughs> getter do you hear about getter no okay so it's all the people that have been deleted from twitter oh god <laughs> and so i made one of those uh, uh how's that going for you i have no idea <laughs> I, uh, I think everybody that i followed had like less than six people following them uh, unless you were joe rogan i think he had like a million well but, you know rogan's rogan yeah he can go uh, anywhere in a million dude people. rogan can like he can do an interview with his dog and a million people would watch that shit. Dude, my mom sent me a Joe Rogan uh, episode the other day. She's like, you have to watch this. And I was just like, I watched it a week ago. When it came out, where have you been? Um, I mean, come on. But uh, so this has been the culture shock. Hopefully they don't send me a cease and desist letter and I'm forced to stop. So I guess um, I'll see you guys in the next six months when I do a next one. So. See you later.